Brian Doan, Sam Hellman, ScarletReport.com, Scout.com. It's bye week Sam, and one thing I've learned about bye weeks around Rutgers these days, it is never boring. There's always something going on. The bombshell we'll start with that came, uh, actually came to the team on Monday. They started finding out that Ian Thomas wasn't going to be around. It was announced Tuesday. You know, talking to some of these cornerbacks and the Deer Barnwells, Anthony Schiaffis, Elon Stevenson, man, are they young in the secondary. When you look at this now, what can you expect out of a Rutgers secondary that already struggled because of their youth and inexperience, just adding more inexperience? You know, when you look at Ian Thomas, who was a cornerback for all of eight months and had three starts under his belt as the veteran, you were in trouble already. And now you lose him, you're in a lot of trouble. And I think it's not necessarily going to be up to the corners. They do have talent. They're very raw and young. There's talent there. But I think it's up to Dave Cohen to find a way to protect the cornerbacks with the way he schemes the next few games, especially against Spread Houston. Um, you know, Rutgers has to develop a cornerback, and I think that starts with the way that the game plan is drawn up. Well, one thing I've learned in, in my few years of covering college football is I don't care how good of a defensive coordinator you are, when your top three cornerbacks are going to be freshmen, it doesn't matter because it's going to be very difficult to protect them as a, as a coordinator, and it, it leads me to something that, that I, I've thought about, you know, with the Lewis Toller injury, who, you know, hurt his arm at Louisville and is done, um, and now with Ian Thomas leaving is, boy, the cornerback depth in the program when it came to experience, you knew it was going to be trouble, and I don't put really any of this on Kyle Flood because he had one recruiting class, really, because when he took over for Greg Schiano, um, you know, a couple days before signing day, you weren't going to go out and get a lot of people. But, you know, you look at the guys that he brought in, especially Nadir, um, you know, Delon was already in the mix, and Anthony Schiaffi, they're good players. They're just young, and to go out and expect them to be able to handle receivers, I, I think, is asking for a lot. But I think the bigger thing is the, the program was left in a situation where it didn't have much depth. Yeah, you know, Kyle Flood did what he could at cornerback in terms of recruiting. You mentioned those guys. He brought in J Javon Tyree at the 11th hour, uh, the year that Greg left, and you know Javon Tyree is a guy that's pretty close to the playing field right now. Uh, and, and you look at you know a guy like Brian Gross Armiento, who he brought in, and honestly he'd probably be playing right now if he didn't get hurt. But uh, you know there's a lot going on in the bye week other than cornerbacks, and I think that the biggest conversation that you know what you can't avoid it, you can never avoid it. Gary Nova, he threw four interceptions. Did he? Yeah, you, you know, you wouldn't notice it from, from the way that people have talked online or, or anything like that, but Gary Nova had a rough game against Louisville, and the bye week is a chance to, to rebuild because for the 150th time, they're not making a change at starting quarterback. This is Gary Nova's job, and he's got to improve. Is that the 150th this week or this season? I don't know, but my fingers hurt. <laughs> well, he, here's what I look at. Yeah, he threw four picks, and he, he didn't play well. He was also under duress the whole game, and it's not easy. And if it was the flip side, I could see a lot of Rutgers fans saying, geez, Rutgers defense pressured the quarterback so well it wasn't his fault that he threw the picks. A couple bad throws, no doubt. He did not play well. But let's not just say that it was all Gary Nova um, at Louisville because he was put in some really bad situations of trying to make a play. Moving forward, you know, we talked about the cornerback depth. The quarterback depth is very similar. Um, Kyle Flood was left with Chase Dodd, who's Mike Pumonte. You know, they have not been able to push Nova to where they want to. They have Laviano, they have Rankin. Look, if you're talking about a redshirt freshman coming in and playing over a kid who's made 25 starts, I mean, I, I don't know what to say to that because that, it just sounds, doesn't happen. It sounds a lot like a coach would be given up if they made a decision like that, which yeah. wouldn't make any sense to me. No, it would make no sense to me either. Um, you know, you take the good and the bad with what Gary Nova gives you, but it tells you that, you know, you hope that the development of some of the younger ones, and, and not, sing, you know, Fumante can still develop and he can still have a, have a role as well, so not giving up on him. But, you know, you're looking at Laviano and Rankin, who they're giving a lot of looks to during the bye week is important, and then Tyler Wieger's coming in. You're starting to see some of that quarterback depth build and what we think should be building. We'll see how far it gets, and we'll see if it continues down that path. But that's the key because, you know, everybody's talking about, well, should Nova play, should they not play? 
the way the offensive line protected against Louisville, Chase Todd is going to be in the game pretty soon because I know Gary Nova is physically tough, but to withstand a beating like that, I was talking to somebody who was on the sideline for it. They said they haven't seen a quarterback take a beating like that in a long time. And I don't think you realize that and, and how much that wears on you. But, I, I mean, to me, um, bye week came at a perfect time because they got to fix a lot of things. Yeah, and, and with quarterbacks, I, I think it's not a it's not a Kyle Flood problem or a Greg Schiano problem. It's just the way things have happened at Rutgers. Well, I, I, I mean, I, I think part of it was Greg, you know, I, I think he had handled it so poorly for so many years with always going to a, a different starter every year that I think that part became part of the problem in recruiting. And it doesn't help when you have a different offensive coordinator every year. I think that the best sure. thing for this staff is, is to find some consistency in terms of its offensive coaching. You know, Ron Prince has a history of developing quarterbacks. You know, Josh Freeman hasn't had the best year in the media, but he's a pretty darn good quarterback. <laughs> and, you know, Matt Schaub is another Ron Prince guy that has had success in the NFL. He's a guy that can develop quarterbacks. You know, Rob Spence has a history with it as well. These guys need coaching, and I think some consistency there after a lot of change over the last five or six years is the best way to find the guy to eventually replace Gary Gold. You know, and, and, and I'll second that, and I'll, I'll, I'll sum it up this way and end, and end it with this. It would be nice for a Rutgers quarterback to go into the offseason not having to learn a new offense with new terminology. Um, the flip side of that is Rutgers is going to have to start paying his assistants for going to the Big Ten to be able to keep them. If they're good assistants, other schools are going to try to get them. And part of being in the Big Ten is paying a lot more money to your assistant coaches.